Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I also would like to thank the professor um, for giving me an opportunity to speak here. Uh, whenever I give a talk, I'm always kind of nervous. But anyway. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I'm Sui Lo at SUNY Korea. Um, my current research interests lie in spectrogravity, uh, finding eigenvalues, uh, finding relationship between eigenvalues of graphs and the graph parameters. Um, so recently, uh, I focus on uh, relations between uh, the eigenvalues of adjacent symmetric graph and uh, uh, factors uh, of a graph for a matching uh, in a graph. Okay. Uh, probably from the second half to next year, I may focus on relations between uh, certain type of colorings of graph, including uh, just normal coloring and all dynamic coloring like this, and uh, uh, eigenvalues of graph or diagram. So if you are interested in uh, spectrogravity and you want to visit uh, Songdo in Incheon, then please feel free to contact me. Yeah. Uh, OK, so uh, in this talk, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, relation between eigenvalues and AB factors in, in regular graphs. So uh, particularly, uh, I'm going to answer the following question. So, what are best upper bounds uh, for a certain eigenvalue in an H edge connected R regular graph to guarantee the existence of an even or odd AB factor? So some of you may not be familiar with the, some of the terms in this question. So let me briefly explain basic definitions. Okay, so in this talk, so I'm going to handle finite, simple, and undirected graph. And uh, so to understand the Lobash GF factor theory, uh, we need to consider uh, two non-negative integer values of functions, let's say G and F, defined uh, on the vertex set of graph G, such that uh, for every vertex B, uh, F of B is greater than or equal to GB, but less than or equal to the GB of vertex B. A GF factor of a graph G is a spanning subgraph such that for every vertex B, the degree of a vertex in the spanning subgraph is between G and F. Uh, by the way, so I also would like to congratulate the Lobash on <laughs> yeah, Abel Prize winner. Uh, so uh, an AB factor of graph G is uh, uh, it's a special type of jet factor. So such that um, G is constantly just A and F is constant just B for all purposes. An even AB factor is an AB factor such that every vertex degree is just uh, the similar for uh, odd AB factor. And uh, if A is equal to B is equal to just a K, then we call it a K factor. Well, <clears throat> so as uh, some of you know, let you know, uh, probably many uh, researchers uh, try to find uh, uh, sufficient conditions actually to guarantee the existence of a, a k factor in a certain type of a regular graph. So a uh, long time ago, so Peterson showed that uh, every non-trivial, even regular graph has a uh, Two factor, which implies that uh, every two R regular graph has a two K factor where K is less than or equal to R. Okay. Then we may be wondering, well, uh, can, can every even regular graph have a odd factor always, or can uh, odd regular graph? have a even factor or other other factor. So uh, will I answer those questions? Answer the question. So by considering H edge connected R regular graph, okay, so with a restriction on the degree 
in terms of uh, edge, connect edge connectedness and the degree and k. Okay, so uh, the regular graph uh, can uh, have a k vector. I mean, contains a k vector. The Boloba, Saito, and Warmer slightly improve uh, the the British bound in here. You can see. Here and here. So if you know the Lobachian factor theory, then well, there are a certain type of uh, subgraphs actually, which is called the uh, uh, other other component. So uh, the in uh, other regular graph, the number of edges coming out from the component must be uh, odd. So that's why we have this kind of the this kind of situation right here. And uh, those are bound are actually uh, the best possible. Well, there are also uh, examples, sharp examples in the paper. Okay. Now, if we have, uh, well, if we have R is bigger than the, these numbers, then what happens? Then can we have a K factor? So if we have a restriction on the number of vertices, then yes. So yes and then there's extended uh, this result. Now we can also think about that uh, if we have, if, we, if R is bigger than maybe both numbers, and uh, is there uh, some eigenvalue condition to guarantee the existence of K factor? Okay, so that's uh, the question. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to handle just adjacent vectors. Probably all of you know what it is. Uh, because uh, we only handle simple graph, so ij entry is just uh, one or zero, depending on the existence of n. And the eigenvalue of the graph are the eigenvalue of the adjacent matrix. Okay. And uh, since uh, the adjacent matrix is just real and symmetric, so the we can index eigenvalue of the graph. Uh, in non increasing order. So, which means that uh, lambda sub 1 of g is the largest eigenvalue, and the lambda sub n of g is the smallest eigenvalue. Okay. And uh, we denote the matching number of graph g by just uh, uh, alpha prime of g. So, uh, Brown and Hammers are the first researchers actually who gave an eigenvalue condition. Uh, in a regular graph to guarantee the existence of one factor. What? Why should we consider a regular graph? No reason, I think. Although, I mean, if we consider a regular graph, then maybe there might be different situations I mean, to guarantee the existence of one factor. But uh, no, one, no one thought about this one. And, the, and then two years ago, when I visited the IBS, actually, I also talked about this. And I thought about it. Can I maybe get something? So, luckily, <laughs> yeah, I found an eigenvalue condition to guarantee the existence of one factor just in uh, uh, just uh, just connected the graph, general graph case. Yeah. So actually, this paper is to celebrate my baby's hundredth uh, day. <laughs> Which is meaningful day actually in Korea. Uh, well, why just the one factor? Uh, we probably want to guarantee that maybe the matching number is is bigger than certain number, right? Actually, uh, with some Korean colleagues, actually, I did that, but uh, it's under review, so I will let you know the result later. Anyway, so let's come back to the result of Brown and Hammer. So um, this bound is not best possible actually in terms of R. So uh, Java, Gregory, and Hammers improved that their bound. Actually, this is actually this is bound is best possible in terms of R actually, and uh, it looks like this. Well, 
And by considering H edge connecting this, uh, I'm a regular graph. Okay, so with the job, uh, I uh, extended the result, which means uh, this implies also the result of Chaba during the analysis. And Lu at uh, Xi'an Jiatong University. Uh, well, if you uh, attended uh, the KMS conference in the last fall semester, uh, then probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a picture to guarantee that I'm here, actually. <laughs> yeah, oh, so. Uh, yeah, and actually, I invited him to, to the conference okay, to do a talk. Yeah. Well, so uh, if I have a chance to visit maybe China, then I actually will visit this guy because he's uh, kind of uh, uh, good at uh, the, the vector theory, and also uh, eigenvalue understand. Yeah. So anyway, uh, he found an uh, eigenvalue condition to guarantee the existence of a k factor, but uh, in a connected the R regular graph in here. So look, look at this and here. Uh, so when M is equal to 1, so that's a uh, site and Walmart. Actually, there's nothing to do. So when M is equal to 1 in here, so if you plug number 1 in here, that's just R. So uh, the largest eigenvalue of R regular graph is just R. And if it is connected, then second largest eigenvalue is more than R. Definitely, uh, third largest eigenvalue also less than R. So there's nothing to it. But uh, if K M is bigger than 1, and here, so then it's possible to R is bigger than K, and also uh, R minus K. Okay. And with, with this uh, eigenvalue condition, we still can guarantee the existence of K factor in here. So this extends the result of both one side and one. Okay. So depending on the parity, of R okay, and K, so we, we kind of slightly different situation, and also this number. So like like those kind of things happen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Gu extended the result of a loop. Am I fast? Am I fast? Is it okay? <laughs> So um, who extended the result of a loop? Okay. So this implies actually the uh, result of a loop. Okay. So by considering uh, H edge connected here. Okay. Very nice. And uh, with Wu and Yang, the loop also found an eigenvalue condition to guarantee the existence of uh, other one. Uh, two years ago, when I visited the IBM, I actually talked about this. So uh, this bound is not that possible. So I wanted to improve this one, and uh, with some Korean colleagues, okay, I actually uh, improved their bound. And here. So two can be so I don't want to be back there. Well, but uh, I actually want to find an eigenvalue condition actually. Uh, to guarantee the existence of uh, the AB factor where A is greater than equal to 1, or even AB factor. Yeah. We do appropriate setting. I could prove it. Looks uh, complicated, but actually, actually not. Well, you can see, okay. Actually, it's not that, it uh, looks complicated, but actually it, it, it's easy actually to prove. I, I, I will give an, uh, a sketch of that uh, here, okay. I mean, or some idea, okay. Uh, so by considering HH can kind of a regular graph, okay. So uh, I just found an eigenvalue condition to guarantee the existence of other AB factor or even AB factor. So this also implies the result of a loop. Implying the result of, uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry. This this result implies the result of uh, uh, Gu, 
implying the result of a loop, expanding the result of a boulevard side and all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, <laughs> this paper is to celebrate my baby's uh, first birthday. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how how can I prove this thing? So I, I need to use the Lobachi GF vector theory, but especially uh, we want to have odd AB vector or even AB vector. So we want to have the same pattern. So we actually want to use uh, Lobachi's parity GF vector theory it looks like this. Yeah, I will give you enough time to make it right now <laughs> to understand. So there is a parity in here, so you can see the region. Okay? G and F are congruent mm -hmm. module two, so same parity. Okay. Well, but we want to show that uh, we w we want to take care about the even AB factor or other AB factor. So that means G is a constant is just A, and F is a constant just a B. So by replacing those numbers there, okay, then the two have a other AB factor. Yeah, to have other AV factor, <laughs> yeah, so we, we can have this kind of situation. But uh, to have an even AV factor, uh, so look at this part. Oops, so. Not anymore? Oh, oh, oh one. Oh, yeah, and here. So if we uh, want to have, we want to have a AV, even AB factor, then this means this is just the even part. So we don't need to worry about this part. So for if we have an even, so you can see the difference between there and here. Anyway, so uh, let's prove this. Maybe uh, the, the case one is enough. And case two and three are similar, actually. But the actually, uh, for other R, actually, just uh, finding this number is harder, actually. It's like harder, anyway. And uh, you may be wondering, where does this number come from? How to determine this number? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not going to show this far, but uh, I, will, I, will, I will let you know where these numbers come from, okay? And how how applying those kind of things. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we want to show that the, if uh, H has connected our regular graph satisfy this condition, then uh, G has an other AB factor. So we we, act, we can prove actually the uh, the contrapacity. So assume that uh, G has no no other AB factor. Okay. So do you remember the Crowley? <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe we can we can see again. But here. Yeah. So G has no other AB factor means for some S and T, let's find this one, bigger than zero. Okay, so say this is delta S T. Okay. So there exists S and T, okay, this joint, and this is bigger than zero. But actually uh, we can we can uh, prove that the delta st is greater than equal to t.
So this is a Q, ST minus T. So, uh, so Q ST actually is uh, the number of uh, component, let me say T sub 1 through T sub Q. that uh, t times 3t sub i and plus 3t sub i and t. So this is the uh, edges okay, uh, with endpoints uh, with g sub i and t. And this means that the number of edges. So this is a congruent one and mod two. So uh, this is, uh, uh, so QST is the number of this one. So by the definition of QST, okay, uh, by letting R is equal to VG minus S union T. So you can see actually it looks like this end here, and T here, the number of components like this. So R is actually this part, okay? So, so this is here, so you can control all the components maybe. Uh, if uh, some component may not satisfy this one means uh, that's just uh, even. So we, we can have actually V times this R and plus R So QST is congruent in this one actually. Okay. And minus just the plus, we can have this one. And B and A have the same parity. So also equal to T. And this is also plus. Okay. So now if you look at this, T is actually congruent it's T times. This one, okay, and uh, if you consider this one, so this one, the edge, this one is counted actually twice, okay, and maybe if you have a, this kind of edge, this is counted in this one, but this one is also counted in this one, which means this is a state, okay, so this is congruent to this one. And uh, we actually want to show that, uh, we actually want to assume that uh, uh, the number of verbs is uh, and even and here. Okay, so which means that this is greater than equal to two because this is one. So uh, first we show that uh, delta ST is just greater than equal to two, okay. And second, now we can also show that uh, there are at least uh, those many uh, components also. So in here. So uh, delta ST is greater than or equal to 2. Well, for simplest, I just write down just Q for QST. And just the DS, maybe AT. This is minus T, GT, and plus. I just replace this one. And uh, we, we kind of manipulate this one. Okay, so uh, this is Q, 
minus p over r and rs. And same thing. And a over r and rs. This is just the rt because we consider our r regular graph. Okay. And this is just this one. Now, P over R and RS, is, you can just think about the edges coming out from S, actually, or inside S. So uh, this is just S and P, but because we have this much. And plus the summation. So this is part like RS. Actually, uh, this part and probably maybe bigger than this one. This is just some part of that one. And plus, so RT, RT, so you can take out. So A of R minus one. And RT, similar, you can do that. So TS and plus the summation. And plus and this one. Okay. okay, then so from here we can have Q minus B. So putting together in here and B minus A over R and SP. And here's a minus and plus is a cancel. And we have those things. So minus this and this. But this is also kind of negative because R is bigger than A actually or greater than or equal to A. So, uh, this part and this part, so we can put the summation uh, S union P and P P sub I minus one. But now I want to have just the minimum of those things. So minus P over R, and we also have uh, maybe if take minus then R minus A R. So if we let R A B, it's just the minimum of uh, B and R minus A. Then we can put just R A B in here and R. Like this. Okay. Well, because B is greater than A, so this is kind of negative. <coughs> greater than or equal to A. So anyway, so we can have this one. So this is Q. You don't need to think about this bar. And this bar is, uh, so we may have uh, many compounds like that, but uh, it's uh, H edge connected. So the, for even R, so H, even if it's H edge connected, well then the number of edges coming out from each component must be greater than or equal to H. But uh, well, even number of edges, Cut edges, also the number of edges uh, it must be even. Degree sum formula. So that's why we need to have an H prime actually, not just H. So uh, in here, H prime and uh, there are Q, so we have Q. So now if you take out Q, then we have RAB and RH prime. So um, if R A B H prime is greater than or equal to R, then we have a contradiction. So this cannot happen. So because that, that's greater than or equal to two, so it cannot be negative. Okay. So we need to have a 
this situation. Okay. So from here, if you just uh, divide by this number on both sides, then you can show that Q is greater than or equal to R minus R A B H prime and two. Ah, so now you can see this number. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Okay, so we show that there are at least those many components okay, satisfying that best condition in the, in the Lobash, um, the, the corollary of Lobash, effectively. Okay, and then so let x be equal to this number. Okay, and then uh, we we want to show that uh, there are at least those many components of in g minus a and t such that uh, the number of edges between uh, this component and t less than this number. So looking at this, you can see h prime is actually less than r and b and t. So actually, this number is bigger than this one. So although we can guarantee that uh, 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 S connectivity is greater than or equal to H, actually H prime. But, uh, well, maybe kind of up to this number, maybe number of edges, but, but restriction in here. Okay. So, how can we show that one? So, we just need to manipulate this part. Yeah. So, Is it okay to be ready? So uh, Q and here, and R A B, and R and here. So we can prove this one also by uh, contradiction. So assume to the contrary that there are at most x minus one comma. Then maybe x minus one components, maybe just uh, L, but at least the h prime, okay. But maybe with, uh, we want to probably maximize this part, and then well, we probably want to minimize also that part. So because we we show that uh, there are q uh, components, so q minus x plus one, okay, and that uh, uh, greater than equal to just x. So uh, so uh, x looks like this, ceiling in here. So that means uh, actually this is uh, smaller than ceiling x. So if you if you multiply in here, then maybe we can have this one. So q and multiply this one, then it's q minus h plus one, okay, and minus this one multiply this one. So you can cancel this one. This is x minus one. This also has a term x minus one, so you can take out so x then one minus r a b r and h prime and x minus one. So some of you look like boring, so I will probably <laughs> stop. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so can we have a contradiction in here? So this is a, uh, and this, I'm sorry, small then, and this part is actually less than. R. Oh. Uh. So two is less than two. So we have a 
into the channel again. Okay, so we also show that there are at least those many components satisfying this uh, condition. Okay, so depending on the parity of this one, okay, because we consider even regular graph, okay, so the number of edges coming out from maybe certain component must be even. So uh, we kind of uh, manipulate also this one, maybe minus one or minus two, depending on the parity of this one, actually. So less than or equal to those, those numbers. So we can do that. And uh, what do we have to do actually then? Then we want to apply the interlacing here. Jeremy, is there anyone who knows in the interlacing here? Okay, so uh, so we, we show that uh, So uh, you can consider the, the axis largest eigenvalue here. So this is f of d greater than equal to uh, the by the interlacing theorem. So lambda sub x, and you can consider g sub one union and g sub x and d. Okay. So this is greater than equal to the minimum of the lambda sub one g sub one, and i is. So what's next? Then definitely we want to determine the minimum of the largest eigenvalue in this type of a component, right? But <laughs> I, I would like to skip that part. Okay. So. <clears throat> So the, the last part, actually, we want to show that uh, the largest eigenvalue of uh, this kind of uh, component is greater than or equal to this number. So we, we should determine the actual minimum of the spectral radius and in the family of this type of component, actually. But I would like to skip that one. Anyway, so this, that's why uh, we, we consider uh, this kind of um, component. I mean, so that number comes from there. Okay. Yeah, anyway, uh, for other R, and to have an even AV factor or other AV factor, uh, pretty much is similar, but uh, this part is actually harder, again, and for other R. Yeah. Anyway, <coughs> so this is an idea to uh, actually uh, uh, to prove this statement. The remaining part is uh, case when A and B have different parity, actually, right? So A and B are, actually A and B cannot be equal, right? and we don't care about the, the same parity, actually. So still, uh, there is an eigenvalue condition to guarantee the existence of just the AB factor, not maybe even or other AB factor, just AB factor, where B is uh, bigger than A. So because we don't care about the parity, so we don't use the Lobache parity GF factor theory, but we use just the Lobache general version, the Lobache just the GF factor theory. And now you can see the difference between this one and the parity one, and you, can, uh, you cannot see the condition, the G and F are congruent, modulo G and here. That's different. And uh, well, we, so we, we want to use this one. But, uh, so still, there are also uh, conditions about the components to satisfy this condition. But uh, see, in this case, uh, G and F are the same. So if A and B are different, then we don't need to, about, we don't need to worry about the components part at all but because of this one, because A and B are different. Okay. So we just want to use the correlate this one. So and now we can see Q S T is not there. We don't need to worry about that part actually. So this so that's why this case is uh, 
uh, actually uh, slightly different than previous cases. Uh, did I erase all? Pretty much similar with the previous case, but we do not need to worry about the component part. If you follow the, the idea of the program here, did you get something? Because we, we wanna we wanna guarantee the existence of a AB factor in, in a, uh, just a, H is connected, maybe our regular graph, yeah. something like that. Anyway, if this is zero, then what you have on the right side is kind of negative, but it's bigger than two. How can this possible? Why does it happen? Because we assume that uh, G has no AB factor, actually. That means every actually connected R regular graph actually has a AB factor where A and B are different. So that means we don't need eigenvalue conditions to guarantee the existence of uh, AB, just AB factor. Well, but, but, uh, I, I couldn't prove okay, that one uh, before I submit actually the paper. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, but I, I submitted that one okay, and with the other Korean guy, Korean colleagues actually. So uh, it's very simple actually. So, so I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, the, yeah, and it's also under review. Okay, <laughs> I should have actually proved it at the same time. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of slow, so. Well, um, so uh, so that's it. Uh, uh, thank you for your question. But uh, uh, well, uh, kind of a couple of months ago, uh, uh, I, I I got a, a referee report actually uh, uh, that uh, uh, can we have I can build a condition maybe to guarantee the existence of a connected AB factor. And I also got a uh, referee comment, so there are many typos, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I revised <laughs> appropriately. <Okay. laughs> yeah. So major revision. So anyway, I uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, I, I, I just found some paper, actually, before giving up this talk. <laughs> I just searched it on math science and, and uh, uh, some researchers actually they worked on uh, the, the just uh, degree conditions actually to guarantee the existence of the connected AB factor. So I'm not sure I can I can also find that I give the condition if you guarantee the existence of the AB uh, connected uh, AB factor. I I don't know how much connectedness uh, affects uh, the eigenvalue. But it may be a uh, uh, good question. And uh, actually, some people just found that I can build a condition to get the existence of a spanning tree. Spanning tree means like uh, actually K tree. K tree. K tree is a tree. The maximum degree is almost just K. <clears throat> so that looks like just one K factor, right? So they can guarantee like a connected one, one K factor. But can we maybe? Improve maybe one to two or something. Like that. I I I don't know. <laughs> so, but maybe that can be uh, also a good question maybe to to think about. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Or it's 
Type means uh, uh, the best as possible. Actually, I said that in terms of uh, actually our, I mean the reg uh, degree and uh, uh, edge connectedness and also uh, the A and B actually. So um, we we just think about uh, the family of uh, uh, the compound to satisfy that kind of condition. So. Uh, it, this uh, component uh, may be quite big, but uh, when, when can we have the, the minimum of that one? So we, we can show that actually uh, the, the minimum possible number of verbs is in here. So that the, the, so this must be the less than or equal to x, x minus 1 or x minus 1, depending on, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, uh, r over r a. Oh, r over. Minus one or minus two, depending on the parity of this one, because we, if you just think about the even regular graph case. Okay. So, uh, so then uh, when can we have the uh, the minimum possible of the spectral radius there? So we can show that uh, that actually satisfies uh, this is exactly equal to minus one or minus two case. So number of edges coming out exactly those many, and also. Uh, we can show that uh, the, the number of verbices, uh, the number of possible verbices in here is also like a, a dependent, like, like R plus 1 or R plus, so depending on the parity of R in here. So, uh, and uh, uh, in this case, the graph, I mean, the other component exactly looks like just to uh, obtained from the complete graph, KR plus 1, just to be removing maybe those many, uh, all of, uh, these many minus over two edges. And then uh, we can show that that's the uh, minimum uh, of the spectral radius. So in that sense, uh, we can say it's uh, best possible. Yeah. So we probably can create that kind of also uh, regular graph. So like put, putting those kind of uh, uh, components and SNT, you can consider. So this one is, Exactly. So R plus one, but this, when when uh, R is even, and uh, so so this many is just R plus one verbs exactly. Like, then we can create that. Kind of. But uh, as you said before, it, it's not best possible maybe uh, considering the number of verbs. So that's why I said that it's best possible in, term, in terms of just the degree and H and A and B and like that. But uh, if we consider the number of verbs, then it's way, very far from uh, the, the, the actually best possible graph. Okay. Other questions? If we, if we relax the condition of G, G is an R regular, but if we assume that G, every vertex, every degree is between R and S, then something similar? Good question. I, I've never thought about it, but so we, we, we want to consider, of course, we want to consider, uh, so like uh, Thomasson actually proved that uh, every R, R plus one graph, R, R plus one graph means uh, the degrees between just R and R plus one, it guarantees the existence of actually K, K plus one K is just less than uh, equal to R and there. So, um, mm, but uh, more generally, so like uh, maybe different number, like uh, every CD, maybe like a regular grant, uh, I'm sorry, every CD grant, maybe can guarantee the existence, so maybe like uh, maybe just a b factor like that, MA, something like that, right? Mm. Uh, but in that case, probably. Uh, we, we may need to consider maybe uh, minimum degree condition or uh, 
already type condition stuff things. We may need to put those kind of condition. And uh, because uh, uh, with those conditions and the minimum degree, actually, uh, we, we even do not, do not need the uh, uh, eigenvalue condition to guarantee the existence of even AB factor or something like that. Uh, but maybe also uh, relaxing the minimum degree condition or maybe order type condition. But by putting maybe eigenvalue condition, well, we, we, may, we can maybe uh, guarantee maybe possibly. But yeah, I, I have no idea. But it, it's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Let's take a quick 